consume her and get her in there. By the way, if she were to do, besides writing the book, most of these things that he's suggesting would destroy the nature of what it is we like the most. And you don't think Newt would really want to do that now, do you? Of course he would. What do you think? You think Newt's doing this because he likes being obscure? Maybe he wants to be less obscure. You think he likes being overshadowed by a 45-year-old woman from Alaska who has not paid the dues he's paid? Besides landing a regular commentator slot on television, by the way, she should never do that. Anyone who wants to be taken seriously should not be seen as a talking head on television, as Newt Gingrich is. Secondarily, she should be in control of every single part of her message. Going on television to speak off the cuff about whatever topic cheapens her. Look, this is what I do for a living. Sarah Palin should not do radio. She should not be the host of a TV show. And she shouldn't be a regular commentator on television. But they're so used to celebrity that that's what they think is needed. I don't recall Barack Obama being a, needing to be a commentator on TV. Do any of you? That's so weird. Yeah. That's really just weird. Oh, and then he says, of course, patronizing her, write and master three types of speeches. One speech is to make money, he said, and should be something smart and entertaining. Can you believe this garbage? Yeah, wh what, what happened to this guy? Did he get food poisoning? And everything's coming up out of the mouth? What the hell happened to him? What is that? Write and master three types of speeches. How about this, Newt? Type, 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 send. How about writing and mastering, having an opinion on an issue, conveying it appropriately and succinctly, and sending it out to your three-quarters of a million Facebook followers who then send it out to another million people, which then changes Senate legislation? How about that? These are people from the other planet called Old Earth. Yeah. Oh, he says, you know what the second set of speeches is, besides the one to make money, is the high-value addresses designed to be delivered before major interest groups, enabling P Palin to project her brand. You know, it's funny. Palin's got her brand. The last time I saw her make speeches, they were awfully damn good. As a matter of fact, it was the only good thing of last year's election. The third speech, of course, is the campaign stump speech, which she can take on the road, he writes, in 2010 to help Republican candidates raise money and gain attention. <laughs> That's funny. Then he says she needs to create some sort of national project or center. He said a national energy project would be a natural for her, and that can serve as a base for her political return and an incubator for ideas and action on issues. You know what else it would do? It would require bringing in establishment, scum to then change and warp her message. And lastly, plan on working really, really hard. He says many ex-politicians confuse being a celebrity with being a serious political player. She can be a personality for a long time, but that's very different from becoming a national leader. This is a man who just suggested to her that she become a TV star and that she uh, move to New York or Washington to be able to hubbub with the people that matter. This is why the Republican Party is dead. Perfectly nice men and women who are so full of crap, everything looks brown. Sorry for the unfortunate analogies today, but that is kind of how I feel. I consider this an attack on Palin, hoping that she will take his advice and become just like them, which would then make her truly irrelevant, which is what all of them want. Then there's this attack, much more direct, much less subtle, from Paul Begala, who does this thing where he compliments a liberal Republican and then uh, tries to decapitate authentic conservatives in the next sentence. All right. This is Paul Begala. Uh, first, you're going to hear Wolf Blitzer go over the new Gingrich suggestions. All of these puffy men 
in Washington giving advice to the woman who has just done an end run around all of them. That's the funny thing. As they're all sitting there jabbering about her, she's actually getting stuff done. Well, wait till you hear what Paul Begala, how he refers to her, which is half of a whack job. Uh, I'll let him speak for himself here. This is from The Situation Room with Wolf Blitzer, weekdays 4 Eastern. We know, we know. Newt Gingrich, the former House Speaker, giving some advice to Sarah Palin, uh, what to do in the coming weeks, months, and years. Write a book, become a regular commentator on TV, consider getting a condo in New York or no, D.C., so write uh, and master three types of speeches, uh -huh. create a national project uh, or center, work really, really, really hard. hard. Uh, good she's advice a girl. for Sarah Palin from Newt Gingrich, or give us the backstory. What's going on? Here? Well, every provision there except one is good. Well, if the idea that she ought to get a residence in Washington, this is the D.C., Republican. New York is crazy. In large part of her appeal, she's not part of what's going on on the East Coast, especially Washington. Terry Jeffrey. She should remember the first residence Ronald Reagan ever had in Washington, D.C. was 16 exactly. Pennsylvania Very Avenue. No condo in D.C. No. or New York. That's absolutely right. Ridiculous. That's the one piece. Newt is a brilliant political strategist. Oh, yes, okay. he's brilliant. Speaker Gingrich, I don't want to be disrespectful. He's a brilliant political strategist. Let's just make, and, make and sure that former government is clear that he likes Newt because Newt is on, he's part of this establishment and they're all the same. That's why I like Governor Newt Alaska Gingrich. would do well to listen to him. I would change D.C. or New York to Des Moines, Iowa. But here's the problem. He's trying to treat her like she's a serious person. She's mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. Okay, she's about a half a whack job, and, mm -hmm. and she does not have the intellectual heft oh, of a Newt yes. Gingrich or almost anybody else in the Republican Party. Heft. And I think she's proved that. Oh, and yes. I, I admire uh, Newt Gingrich for for pretending mm -hmm. that she's a serious person, but Sarah Palin has proven herself to be you flaky think she's a, and an intellectual. You think she's flaky? I, I think one thing we know about Sarah Palin is she has rock solid principles and that she's ready to fight for those principles. I do <laughs> believe. I do. Her job. I, do I, do, I do believe that she has to get out and debate national issues like this health care bill now and prove that she's able to go can nose she, to she, nose. You think she can? I, I think it's not proven yet, Wolf. I think she ought to get more in the face of President Obama, less on this issue. This is an excellent issue for you know, her. This was, she keep this was from uh, yesterday. I'm sorry, how much more in the face do you need to get than by making the Republicans and the Democrats in the Senate take out something that you thought was important and that you were lying about and wasn't true at all and didn't exist, and then it gets taken out? That pfft, you heard was Paula Gala. It's funny. Can she debate the issues? It's, uh, she is having more of an impact than any of these people sitting around talking to themselves by posting something on Facebook, and they can't stand it. So their message, Begala's message in particular, is an attempt at telling their base, by the way, don't be afraid, she's meaningless. It's the same thing they're saying about you, isn't it? This is their worldview. As a matter of fact, it has very little to do with Sarah Palin. The way they look at you as a town hall patriot or as a conservative and the way they see Sarah Palin is identical. You are an irritant. You're stupid. You don't have intellectual heft. You are not of them. You are below them. You do not know what you're talking about. You are irrelevant. You are not serious people. Let them all realize that let them think that about us and then let them deal with what it means for them to have life lessons by people who are like that let them find out and this also by the way makes them not like this country even more why do you think they don't like this country because it is of us they truly think they are above everyone but Gala's arrogance and absurdity well, truly he truly Believes that about Palin and everyone else. Because he's on TV. New Gingrich thinks it's too. You, because you're on TV. You got to get out there and like talk with us in order to prove something. The same arguments were made about Ronald Reagan. They were identical arguments. Not because there's some list out there about how to approach people like this. 